Hello, my name is Nikolai Yusupov, and in this video I like to talk about why the one-handed easy climb technique is an inferior technique, and that's not the technique you should be employing when you're trying to ventilate someone or provide uh, pre-oxygenation for someone. Uh, this technique was essentially created for lay providers, and they created this technique because it was much easier to teach someone to do the head tilt, chin lift, and the easy climb technique uh, for the sake of uh, making it very easy. Uh, you don't have to teach the airway anatomy properly. You don't have to have deliberate practice so they can uh, practice a good technique, which is a triple airway maneuver. So all of these things were done to essentially make it way easier. So the lay uh, rescuer could employ these techniques in the field. However, you're a professional provider and you, you don't want to use the inferior technique. You want to use the best technique from the start, right? I don't want to try to use bad technique in the beginning and then convert to a good technique later. I want the best from the start. Now, why do I say um, the one-handed EC clamp is an inferior technique? Now, if you look here, I have the airway test trainer and I'm going to show you why this is an inferior technique. So when you start doing these techniques, you're taught to do head tilt chin lift, then you position the mask over the patient's face and then you're going to create something that's known as the EC clamp. So here uh, I have drawn on my fingers the letter E uh, and these three fingers will essentially be placed on the mandibular body and the C is formed over the mask and it's held so the mask in place. Now, when you're performing uh, this EC clamp technique, here's the problem. First of all, I cannot elevate my mandible so that my lower teeth are in front of my upper teeth, which will facilitate the best optimal delivery of oxygen. Two, I tend to press right, on the mandib submandibular tissues and the, and the mandibular body here. And what's the problem with that? The problem with this is if I press on the mandible and the submandibular uh, tissues, the soft tissues, I tend to close the mouth and further obstruct my airway. In addition, uh, this mask on the side is not being supported by my second hand, so I have a lateral air leak where my air is escaping. In addition, uh, if my air is escaping and I don't see good chest rise, uh, what do you tend to do? You tend to squeeze harder, so you facilitate more air going to the stomach, so you have more gastric uh, insufflation. And also, when you're ventilating someone, if that person is not breathing, uh, you, your own epinephrine surge is through the roof, and if you don't see a chest rise, you will tend to do all these things uh, much more faster, and also will clamp down on the mouth uh, much more stronger. So you tend to do this, Right, uh, in the situation right, when the patient is not breathing. All those factors will contribute to a poor ventilatory effort. Right? So what is the best way of doing this? So the best way was actually validated by Peter Safar in 1950s, and what he recommends is a triple airway maneuver. So what does that entail? So the uh, operator places themselves behind the patient. Using your index finger, you find the ascending remy right under the earlobes, and what you're going to do is you're going to lift the lower jaw up to the ceiling so that the lower teeth are in front of the upper teeth. Then you're gonna use your thumbs to open the mouth and then you're going to extend the head over the atlanto occipital joint. So all these things together combined will look like this. Elevation of the mandible, opening of the mouth, extension over the atlanto occipital joint. Now, how do I teach this to students utilizing a bag valve apparatus? So first of all, I disconnect the mask. Uh, and your uh, mask will be sized uh, appropriately to the patient's face. Then you're going to find these cuffs and what you're going to do is with your fingers you're going to extend them, you're going to spread them. What's the purpose of this? The purpose of this is that when I put this mask on the patient's face uh, and let go of these cuffs, they will come back and they will basically grab the soft tissue creating a better seal. So open the cuffs, bridge of the nose, seal. Then you're going to find your ascending remy, lift the jaw to the ceiling so that the lower teeth in front of the upper teeth Use your thumbs to open the mouth, extend the head over the atlanto occipital joint. Your partner then will come in, connect the uh, back portion of it, and squeeze one breath every six seconds. Now you, you're going to tell me, well, what if I'm on a call and my partner is doing something? For example, they're doing CPR, and here I have to uh, uh, squeeze the bag, or I have to uh, intubate the patient, or I have to pre oxygenate them, and my partner is starting an IV. Uh, on the patient, what, what can I do? So if there's no bystanders, uh, other EMS providers, firefighters, uh, police officers, where you could ask them to squeeze the bag once every six seconds, uh, and you're literally by yourself, you still, you still do not go back to the EC clamp. What you're going to do is you're going to then connect your mask with the bag, and I'm kind of positioning it on my forearm here. 
And the technique I'm going to employ is, again, open my cuffs, place on the bridge of the nose, seal, lift my mandible, use my thumbs to open the mouth, extend over that lantocipital joint, and then I'm going to use my thorax to kind of depress the mask one breath every six seconds. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand. Now, if you have a smaller body habitus, what you can do is essentially do the same technique, but place the back valve mask under your uh, side and use like a chicken wing technique to squeeze, right? So if you have a small body habitus, you could use this to do, to facilitate the same. For me, it's easier to perform these techniques that I showed you. And the benefit of this technique is that you have both hands sealing the mask, so you have no lateral air leak, right? The air is not escaping. Two, I can extend my jaw uh, so that the lower teeth are in front of the upper teeth. In addition, uh, when I'm delivering the breaths, less of them are going into the stomach, so I get uh, less gastric insufflation uh, because I don't have to squeeze the back much harder. Uh, and also, again, when you're doing the two-handed technique, you would never, never, ever go back to doing this. The reason why you don't want to use the two-handed technique uh, with the EC clamp method is for all those things I just described earlier with one-handed. You're still going to have uh, collapse, right, uh, uh, of the uh, soft tissues here because what you tend to do is press on the mandibular body, closing the mouth, and compress on the submandibular tissues, again, for uh, closing the airway here, right? And we do not want to do this when we're trying to ventilate someone and trying to employ the best technique.